Whenever you have two or more equations that are connected by the word and, you have a system of equations. A system of equations can have any number of variables. You could have two variables, three variables, or even more. We know of at least three ways to solve systems of equations, and we're going to review those three methods in this video. Those methods are graphing, substitution, and linear combinations, sometimes called the addition method or elimination. There are also many other ways to solve systems of equations, and you may want to research those on your own. One way that we can do this is by graphing the system of equations. In other words, we graph both of the lines, and we find the points that they have in common. Because the graph shows the solution set to each of the equations, the values in common are where the graphs intersect. In this case, where the red dot is on the screen, that's the x and y pair that is in both solution sets the values that would make each of those equations true simultaneously. There are no other pairs of numbers that would do this. Sometimes when we look at the solution sets, we see that the lines are parallel, meaning there are no intersections. In this case, because the solution sets don't intersect, there are no values in common that satisfy both equations simultaneously. In this case, we say there are no solutions. Finally, on occasion, you might graph two equations and find out that they're right on top of each other. They're the same line. In this case, the equations are equivalent, and they have identical solution sets. Because the solution sets are identical, we say there are an infinite number of solutions, because the solutions will satisfy the equations both simultaneously at all times. In our first exercise, we want to solve the system of equations graphically x minus 2y equals negative 2, and 6x plus 3y equals 18. The first thing we do is put each of the equations in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Then, we graph each equation on the coordinate plane. Finally, we look for the point of intersection. That's the solution to the system of equations. The value 2, 2 are the only pair of numbers that will make both equations true simultaneously. If we look at the equations, and we substitute the 2 in for x, and the 2 in for y, and we work through the numbers, we see that indeed, this solution does work in both, which means it's in the solution set for both of the equations. In exercise 2, we have a system of equations to solve graphically. 20x minus 4y equals negative 12, and 10x plus 2y equals 26. This exercise is for you to try. Please pause the video here and complete the exercise. We began by putting the equations in the slope-intercept form, y equals 5x plus 3, and y equals negative 5x plus 13. We then graph both solution sets on the coordinate plane and look for the points that they have in common. In this case, the point in common is 1, 8. x equals 1, and y equals 8, is the solution to the system of equations. Those are the only two numbers that you can substitute into both equations to make them true simultaneously. A second method for solving systems of equations is substitution. With substitution, we solve one of the equations for one of the variables, so we have y equals or x equals, and then we substitute that into the second equation. For instance, in this exercise, let's suppose I take the first equation and I solve for x. x equals 2y minus 2. I could take that and put it into the second equation, the 6x plus 3y equals 18. Since x is equal to 2y minus 2, I can replace the x in the other equation with the 2y minus 2. I've completed the substitution. Now, we solve the remaining equation, and we find that y equals 2. So we now know the y value that the two equations have in common. What about the x that goes with it? To find the value of x, choose any one of the two equations. I'll choose x equals 2y minus 2. Now, take the y value and substitute it in. When we calculate, we find that x also equals 2. So the solution to this equation is the point 2, 2. x equals 2 and y equals 2. Those are the only two numbers that you can substitute into the original two equations, and both of them will be true simultaneously. 
This is the same equation that we looked at a couple of moments ago when we did the graph. When we found the graphs, we saw that the intersection was at the point 2, 2. So we've now seen two different ways to solve the same system. Exercise 4 is for you to try. Can you use substitution? Solve for one of the variables and then substitute into the other equation. Please pause the video here and complete the exercise. There are several possible ways you might have approached this using substitution. I'm going to present one possible way, but you may have come up with something a little different. Either way, the solution should be the same. For my example, I'm going to solve 10x plus 2y equals 26 for y, so that y equals negative 5x plus 13. I substitute that into the other equation to get x equals 1. Now, I look for the corresponding y value. I've picked one of the equations, y equals negative 5x plus 13, although you could have picked any of them. Substitute in the 1 and find that y equals 8. The solution to the system of equations is the point 1, 8. x equals 1 and y equals 8 are the only two values that you can substitute into both equations to make them true simultaneously. We saw this same solution just a few minutes ago when we looked at it graphically and we found the intersection. In that case, 1, 8 was the intersection on the graph. That was the two vet numbers that satisfied both equations. So with this one, again, we've seen two different ways that we could solve it. A third way to solve a system of equations is by creating linear combinations. Sometimes we refer to this as addition or elimination because really what you're doing is adding the two equations together in order to eliminate a variable. In our first exercise, exercise 5, we have two equations x minus 2y equals negative 2, and 6x plus 3y equals 18. The objective here is to get a pair of variables that are opposites. In this case, I have one that is a 1x and one that's a 6x. To make these opposite variables, I can use the multiplication property of equality and multiply both sides of the top equation by negative 6. When I do that, notice what happens. I now have a negative 6x in the first equation and a positive 6x in the second equation. The final step of this process involves adding the terms from the equations together. When I do that, I have negative 6x and positive 6x. There are no x's left. 12y plus 3y is 15y. 12 plus 18 is 30. Solve for y and I get y equals 2. 2 is the y value that makes both of these equations true simultaneously. Now we can find the x value. We do that by substituting 2 into one of the equations. When we do that and we calculate the numbers, we find that x also equals 2 and that the solution here is the point 2, 2. x equals 2 and y equals 2 are the only values that you can substitute into both of the equations and have them be true simultaneously. We've solved this equation two other ways, with substitution and by using the graph. Notice that even this way we came up with the same solution, so we have three fantastic ways to solve systems of equations. Exercise 6 is for you to try. You've solved this by graphing, and you've solved it using substitution. Can you solve this system of equations by using elimination? Please pause the video here and complete the exercise. There are several different approaches you could take to solve the system using linear combinations. My example is one possible way. I began by looking for a variable to cancel out so that I'd have opposite variables. I decided to work with the y's. In my case, I decided to multiply the bottom equation by 2 so that I'd have a negative 4y and a positive 4y. When I multiplied those out and then added the terms together, I found that 40x equals 40, and so x equals 1. Now I found the corresponding y value. I substituted 1 in for x, calculated the numbers, and I found that y equals 8. The solution of the system of equations is the point 1, 8. x equals 1 and y equals 8 are the only pair of numbers that will cause both equations to be true simultaneously. Sometimes we encounter a situation where a system has either no solution or has an infinite number of solutions. 
How can we tell if this is the case when we're working algebraically? We know how to do it while looking at a graph. We either see parallel lines or two equations that have a graph right on top of one another. But algebraically, what exactly are we looking for? We encounter these special situations when the variables cancel out of our equation and we're just left with numbers. If the numbers make sense, we have an infinite number of solutions. If the numbers that are remaining don't make any sense, we have no solution. Let's take a look at a couple of examples to illustrate this. We have a system of equations that we want to solve. We can use any of the methods we want. In this case, I've decided to use linear combinations or addition and elimination. I decided to work with the y's and multiplied the top and bottom equation by negative 2. When I add the terms together, I end up with no x's and no y's. In fact, on the left hand side of this equation, I simply have 0 and on the right 68. 0 does not equal 68. What's left makes no sense and if it makes no sense, there's no solution. If I were to look at the graph of these equations, the solution sets we can see do not intersect. The two lines are parallel, which also indicates that there's no solution. In a final exercise, we have two equations here that we want to solve. We want to solve the system and so again, I decided to use elimination. I multiplied the top equation by negative 3. Again, when I added the variables together for each of the terms, I found that I have no x's, no y's, and 0 on the right hand side. I'm left with 0 equals 0 and that makes lots of sense. If something makes lots of sense, then there's an infinite number of solutions. If we were to look at the graph for this equation, we'd see that the graphs are right on top of each other, which means that the original equations were equivalent. And so now we remember that a system of equations is two or more equations connected by the word and. The solution to a system of equations is the values of x and y that'll cause both equations to be true simultaneously. We have three ways to solve a system of equations graphically, using substitution, or using linear combinations. This is everything you need to know to get started working with systems of equations.